all right, because um, it's kind of a long chapter, all right. But today, um, we're going to simply be talking about uh, congruent triangles, all right. So listen up, please, carefully. Um, first of all, um, triangles are congruent if what? All the sides are congruent and all of the what? Angles. angles are congruent. You can have triangles with the same angles and different lengths. That's exactly correct. Think of it this way. The easiest way to look at that is like an equilateral triangle. All the angles are 60 degrees, but all equal angular triangles are not congruent. All right, is everybody with me on that? All right, so right now, basically what you're doing is you are proving lines, or not lines, but you're proving that um, triangles are congruent. Right now, the only way you know to show that triangles are congruent is by naming all sides and all angles congruent. And then once you do that, then you can say that the triangles are congruent. All right? And for that matter, that would be true for any shape. Whether it's a parallelogram or a pentagon, if you prove the sides are congruent and you prove the angles are congruent, then the two shapes are automatically what? Congruent. That's what that means. All right? Now, um, when you show triangles are congruent, down here I'm looking at triangle ABC is congruent to R, the triangle RST. And when you do that, all right, that tells you what corresponds to what. All right, so when you're writing proofs or when you're looking at triangles, I personally do not look at the triangles themselves. I look at this right here. All right. What corresponds to A? R. What corresponds to B? And what corresponds to C? Perfect. Now you understand what I'm saying. All right. What side corresponds to AB? What's to BC? And AC? Yeah, I told you. It's very simple. Very simple. Now, does it matter how I write ABC? Could I write, for example, let's say triangle uh, BCA? Yeah. Right. If you write triangle BCA, you would say that's congruent to triangle STR. Right. It doesn't matter the order. All right. Now, generally, you go. Uh, counterclockwise or clockwise it doesn't matter all right but you're not allowed to skip around all right vertices all right we'll talk about that more if that didn't make sense all right now the next thing i need for you to understand is true is this it's called the third angle theorem all right and see if that is obvious all right if two angles of a triangle can grow to two angles of the second triangle then the third angle must be what? Congruent. That makes sense, right? For example, if one's 30 and one's 60, in another triangle you see a 30 and a 60, then the third angle has to be what? In each triangle. Does everybody agree with that? So that's called the third angle theorem. That's called the third angle theorem. So anytime you see two angles congruent, then the third angle must be congruent. All right? And obviously we can prove that. It's a very simple proof. All right. Now, the next thing is here, you guys already did this for me, so I'm not going to do the example. All right. If I gave you that, I don't need this over here. Does everybody agree with that? Right. Because you can go right off of uh, the statement. All right. That's called the congruent statement. All right. Now, down here, it says, show that the polygons are congruent by identifying all congruent corresponding parts then write a congruent statement. So I just want to make sure you understand what I'm saying. When somebody says corresponding, that means up here in this example problem, angle X corresponds to angle what? R. I, I, sometimes I don't say that clearly enough. Does everybody understand me? If I said side XY, that corresponds to side what? All right. You understand what I'm saying now. All right. 
there's corresponding angles and there are corresponding sides and we refer to those as corresponding parts of the triangle. Is everybody hearing me? The corresponding parts. There are six parts to the triangle. There are three angles and there are three what? Sides. And if all three sides and all three angles are congruent, then the triangle is automatically what? Congruent. That's what we're discussing today. All right? So in this figure down here, again, it's kind of annoying, so I'm just going to write once probably, and then you're going to see how simple it is, and I don't think it's necessary after that. All right? But I'm going to write it out for the first one. So you would say angle... A is congruent to angle what? J. Angle uh, B is congruent to angle what? K. Angle C is congruent to angle L. Does everybody got right off the bat? Did we good with that? All right. That's three angles. Now I need to write the three what? I have to write the three sides. So now we would say... AB is congruent to JK, and BC is congruent to KL, and uh, AC is congruent to JL. All right. Now, it's important that you say AC is congruent to what? JL, not AC is congruent to what? LJ. Everybody see that? All right, the order does matter. All right, the order does matter. Now, we wrote the six corresponding parts. And because the corresponding parts are congruent, what's true now about the triangle? Uh, They're congruent. So we could say triangle ABC is now congruent to triangle JKL. Is everybody good on that? Yes. For the angles, though, you can switch that up. So if you're in the triangle, so you can say yes. uh, CBA. It's congruent to J. You could exactly. say, like, for AC equals JL, can you say CA equals LJ? Yes. Okay. Yes, you're right. 100%. All right, but in other words, the letter has to correspond to the right angle. All right, that's all. Minor technicality. All right. Now, number two is a little bit more annoying because it's twisted around a little bit. Did I see that? Yeah. Right? That's why it's important to go to the angles. In my opinion, always do the angles first. All right? So I'll just do this one, and then we'll move forward. So, again, angle A is congruent to angle what? Mm -hmm. And then we would say angle B is congruent to mm -hmm. angle... Yeah, I don't really like saying angle C, right? Angle B, and I really should do angle B a little better, even though I know what you mean, all right? For angle B, I really prefer you say angle A, B, C is congruent to angle what? B, C, D. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, C, so B could be one of three options, right? You see what I'm saying, right? Yeah, because it could be this one, it could be this one, or it could be the big one. All right. That's why you just have to be careful with that. All right. Now, we're going angle D. No, not angle D, but angle uh, B, C, A is congruent to angle what? C, B, D. Everybody okay with that? Everybody happy with that? And then we're going with the sides. So now we would say AC is congruent to... Um, now, here's where I want to try to make sure you hear what I'm saying. It's just a minor technicality, and I, you know, it's not a big deal to me, honestly. Right? But if we say... A to C, we're going 1 to 3. Does everybody see that? Does everybody understand what I'm saying? 1 tick mark to 3 tick mark, so it would be side what? DB. All right, again, that's minor. And if you put BD by mistake, I'm not, I don't even really care, to be honest. 
but you wanna you wanna just like when there's multiple choice tests and stuff, you, you wanna make sure you see the difference. All right? Does everybody hear me on that? All right. So now after AC, I'm gonna do AB, and AB is congruent to DC. Thank you. And now notice what I'm doing. I'm going one, two, three, and one, two, three. I just think it's important to be organized. All right. So now we're on three. So we would say BC um, is congruent to what? This is a good one. BC is congruent to what? CB, technically. Now look, if you don't, I don't want you to just write it down without seeing it. Let me see what I'm saying. BC is not congruent to BC in this case. BC is congruent to what? CB. CB. And that looks wrong until you realize I'm looking at two different what? Triangles. Right? Yeah, you just have to separate it. It helps sometimes. Right? But again, you, you can't understand what I'm saying unless you physically look at it. From B to C, right, on the left side is uh, a two to three tick marks. The one on the right, two to three is C to B. All right, hopefully you understood what I said by that. I don't, I don't think that's hard. Or I don't think it's hard at all. All right? Now, technically I hate to do this, but number three is kind of what we need to talk about also. All right, and this is how we're gonna end up proving things are congruent, because we're going to have to use the what? We're gonna to have to use the parallel lines. Everybody hear me on this? All right. Now, L, K, M, L, K, M is congruent to what? J, M, K. J, M, K, right? Down here. Because those are called uh, alternate, alternate interior angles. Those are called alternate interior angles. Everybody happy with that explanation? Yes. Alternate interior angles. All right. Now, I can say that angle LMK is congruent to what? Mm -hmm. JKM. Thank you very much. Those are also what? Those are also alternate interior angles. And that's what you would be writing in your proof. All right? Then they're not congruent yet because I have two sides congruent, right? In other words, I have, try to listen to me now, KL is congruent to JM. That's what? Given. Everybody see that? Yeah. Then I have... Uh, KJ is congruent to LM. Why is that? It's given. Why is angle LKM congruent to JMK and why is LMK congruent to JKM? Go, tell me. No, why? No, 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 you didn't hear what I'm saying. I'm asking you what tell me, tell me. No, 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 listen. Okay, I didn't say it correctly, obviously. Listen, I'm asking you why the green angles are congruent and why the red angles are congruent. Yeah, you would say alternate interior angles. Sorry, that's my fault. Or alternate interior angles. I'm, I'm highlighting what we're doing. If this were a proof, this is what you would be writing. You would be writing that KL is congruent to JM, and you'd be writing KJ is congruent to LM, and you'd be writing that KL and JM are parallel, and KJ and LM are parallel, and that's all the what? Given. Then you would be saying the green angles and the red angles are congruent because they are alternate interior angles. All right? Now, remember what we said. All the sides have to be congruent. Does everybody agree I have two sides of each triangle congruent, right? So then how? Do, what's KM? KM is congruent to itself. Okay. That's reflexive. That's the reflexive property, right? So do you agree that side is shared with both triangles? Mm -hmm. So now do you see what I'm saying? 
all three sides we've now shown that they're congruent. Do I agree? The only thing we're missing is angle J and angle L. And those are congruent now by the, the third angle theorem. Yes, the third angle theorem. Now, of course, I would not want you to write third angle theorem. You can if you want, right? You can just say if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the what? Third angle is congruent. All right, if you want to write third angle theorem, feel free. What? Um, uh, KJ equals LM or J, KJ, KJ KJ is equal to ML. Oh, right. And then KM, does KM equal KM or does KM equal MK? KM equals MK. Yep. Exactly right. Technically. Very Cause, good. Cause very, very good. Exactly. Exactly. 100%. 100% correct. All right. That's what I'm saying. They're just small little technicalities. The difference between an A and a B, very minor. Very minor. All right. So now, are those triangles congruent? Yes, because we've named all the sides, we've named all the angles. All right, so now we're writing the congruent statement. So we would say triangle. Now I like to go one, two, three. So in mine, I would say triangle M, K, J is congruent to triangle K, M, L. Do you ever see how simple that is, right? No, I, I no. That's what I said. We just we wrote it on the on the. Yes. Yeah, that's what I want you to be able to do. All right, because eventually it's the proof. All right. Um. Now I'm trying to check on number four. Let me look at number four for a second. Yeah, actually, there is a mirror image there, but but I'm I'm still not certain how you're supposed to know the angles. Right, but they are congruent, and you'll learn that tomorrow. But right now, you don't know that those angles are congruent. Right. If 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 it was like this, guys. If this was like this, we would be in good shape, right? Because then the opposite angles would have to be congruent. They'd have to be 45 degrees. But they don't have it marked properly, all right? So on number four, I'm just going to write not possible, right? They actually are congruent, but we haven't gotten to that section yet. So right now, we don't know that they're congruent, all right? However, number five is not hard, and number six is actually right. Um, the difference here um, is that you have to understand that U.S. is the perpendicular bisector. And you can tell this because this is equal Right, so this has to be 90 degrees. All right, that has to be 90. All right. So again, let's just talk real quick now about 7 and 8. Find the value of x. All right. So it's... And find the value of y. So in this case right here, show that the polygons are congruent by identifying all congruent corresponding parts. All right, so down here, yeah, let me, let me, I, I think they failed to mark some things, so I'm just going to go ahead and mark it. Um, EF is going to be congruent to what? To BC. All right. AB, thank you, is congruent to DE. And AC is congruent to DF. All right. 
Thank you. All right. Which means that this right here, angle D is congruent to angle A. So now we can solve for Y by saying what? Right, 2y minus 5 equals 65, so we can just say y is equal to what? 35. Should we go with that? No. No? Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right. If y is 35, then I can replace this over here with 35. All right. So then 90.6 is equal to 2x plus 35. All right. So then what is that? 2x is equal to 55.6, I believe. And then x is equal to 27.8. All, right, All right. So again, um, let me see what I ask you to do here. All right. Again, this over here we'll say is done. All right, let's go down here now. Um, I want to write the proof here for question number one. So again, let's mark everything. All right, A is congruent to C. D is congruent to B. Uh, A, D is congruent to CB and AE is congruent to CE um, and AC bisects uh, DB. If AC bisects DB, what can you tell me? Yes, that's exactly right. These three. Everybody with me? All right. And now the last part of the proof would be to tell me what angle. Well, we can't say angle E. We'd have to say angle B E C is congruent to. Yes. So now we can say this. There's two ways to say those are equal. How? What are both ways? Those are what? Vertical angles. We could also say what? The third angle sum. Right. And that's a theorem because we can prove it. Yeah, that's what we're saying. You could do two things. You could do two things, two ways to show that they're the same. Well, why did that need to be proved? Well, because in order to prove that triangles are congruent, you have to show that all angles and all sides are congruent. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? So we have we have the given, and then there were just a few things missing. Right? And one of the things that were missing was the vertical angles and that. You agree with that, right? Yeah. All right. So the proof would go something like this. What? Oh, I was going to ask if so we still have to put x in there. Oh, this is what I'm listening. Would you care if we did like five given units like this? No, I, 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 I'm not. I'm like you guys. I wouldn't do that. Okay. Now watch how cool this is, guys. I learned something. You guys probably already know this. But watch what I've just learned. Right? Yeah, I, I didn't realize you could do this until I just learned. This is a fascinating feature. Copy, and now you come down here and paste. Oh, that yeah. Oh, so, so look at that. Again, guys, I, I just want to say, look how nice that is. Yeah. All right? That's really, really nice. And um, to me, it just is, uh -oh, it saves a bunch of time. Oh wait, it might this might be as small as it needs. Well, move it over. Yeah, I got you. Thank you. All right, so this is number one. That's number one, and then number one we can just say given. So you don't have to be too lazy. Uh, it's a nice way to do it. All right. Now, um, the next step, test or, or step number two, we said that. Uh, DE is congruent to EB, and that was definition of bisect. 
All right, then you mark that appropriately. And then step three was to say that uh, angle A E D is congruent to angle B E C, and that's the third angle theorem or vertical angle theorem. Either one. I don't. I really don't care, guys. All right. Wait. Come on. Come on. Why? Um, why is it A E D with C E D? Um, all right. It's technical. It doesn't matter. See what I'm saying? All right. It really doesn't matter how you name the angle. So all right. It's not like right or wrong, technically. Then finally, yes. Finally, copy, paste. That's step number four. And number four is definition of congruent triangles. All right, definition of congruent triangles. The triangles are congruent if what? If all the corresponding parts are congruent. And we've listed what? We listed all three sides. Yeah, that's exactly right. Now, tomorrow we're going to show the different ways. Like a triangle is congruent by side, 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 or side, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. There's ways that you can look at it without having to list all the different parts. All right. Now, if you look in the next one, it says write a paragraph proof. We never write paragraph proof proofs, obviously. So I want you to go ahead and write that proof out. Um, for, I'm looking at the next lesson here pretty much. All right. So what do I think is important? Here you go. Listen to me, guys. Because, again, I... I it's annoying to have to write all that stuff. All right? and, and again, I just think it's so easy. It, to me, it's not necessary. All right? So here's what I want you to do. Um, I really want you to make sure you just write out two. All right? I want you to find X and Y and the proof. This is what I want here. And then the other proof right here. So that's your assignment. All right? I'm going to show you again right now. Look up. There's a proof, right? The second proof. Then I don't care about number two, number or number one. Number two is just a practice, right? We can do that. That's the easy, really simple part. And then finding X and Y should be simple. And then write the proof for number five. All right. So again, I really liked the new notability feature because I don't think you've been able to do that in the past where you've been. You haven't been able to. Yeah. So you can. You can. Yeah. yeah. All right. So again, lots of good things. All right. Please finish it up. All right. And and I know you heard the boss say second semester or second nine weeks is important. All right. The second nine weeks super important. All right. Again, remember your grade is accumulation of first quarter and second quarter. We send over semester grades, not quarter grades, all right? So again, lots of people are trying to get in Jesuit. I've got six or seven or eight applications, letters of recommendations. I write out the letters of recommendations, and just to make sure you know, I'm always honest, all right? If you're of good character, that's an outstanding, all right? All the little details that I'm listening and watching, those are important to me, all right? Because when I sign my name saying you're outstanding, you are outstanding. All right? And grade has really nothing to do with it. Whether you're an A, B, or C student, your evaluation does not reflect your grade as much as it reflects your character. All right? That's what's important. <coughs>